to get the most from Northern Ireland's world-famous seascapes and historic cities you'll need to be organized because there's so much to get through. On the road you can follow itineraries like the Causeway Coastal Route, which will get you to volcanic landmarks like the UNESCO Giants Causeway, but also epic beaches, glens, cliffs and castles. Fans of Game of Thrones may already know that Northern Ireland is one of the show's go-to filming locations for outdoor scenes at Winterfell and the Iron Islands. Today we share the top 10 best things to do in Northern Ireland so you can plan a trip and experience all the exciting attractions and activities this beautiful city has to offer. Starting with number 10, Giant's Causeway. Photos can never do justice to the scale and strangeness of these interlinked red basalt columns, formed after a volcanic event 60 million years ago. The sea adds to the spectacle, constantly crashing over the rocks and receding, while multilingual audio guides will conduct you around the site. A new visitor center unveiled in 2012 has cutting-edge exhibits to fill you in on its geology, and the legend of the Irish giant who built the causeway to get at his Scottish rival. The Giant's Causeway has 40,000 columns in all, mostly with perfectly hexagonal cross-sections, climbing to a maximum 12 meters. At number 9 is the Titanic Belfast. Opened in 2012, Titanic Belfast is an award-winning attraction at Belfast's Harland and Wolf Shipyard where the RMS Titanic was assembled and launched in 1912. Few vessels in the history of the world pique people's interest like this ill-fated passenger liner, and the nine galleries here recount the history of this ship and its fleet mates HMHS Britannic and RMS Olympic. These are immersive and interactive, plunging you into all the activity of early 20th century Belfast's dockyards, and then the opulence of the Titanic's reconstructed cabins and famous stairway. At number 8, Castlewell and Forest Park, Northern Ireland's National Arboretum was begun on this 450-hectare park in County Down. The park has formal and free-flowing gardens, with sculptures, fountains and flower borders as well as an ornamental lake 1.6 kilometers in length. At its core is the walled Annesley Garden, 1850s, with maples and conifers shipped over from Japan, along with rhododendrons from China, eucryphias from Chile, Athrotaxus cypresses from Australia and giant sequoias from North America. At number 7, Dunluce Castle. Ruins don't come more beautiful than this 16th century clifftop castle in northern County Antrim. On a sheer basalt outcrop, Dunluce Castle was raised by the McQuillans, and then taken over by the McDonalds who took control after winning two battles between the clans in the 1500s. The McDonald's continue to own the property today, but abandoned the site after the Battle of Boyne in 1690. When the McDonald's became the Earls of County Antrim in the early 1600s a small town cropped up behind the castle. This was raised by Cromwell after the Irish Uprising of 1641 and excavations have started to reveal its grid of cobblestone streets. At number 6 in our list, Carrick A. Reed Rope Bridge, Maintained by the National Trust, this bridge made from Douglas fir and wire cables was erected in 2008. But it is just the latest in a long line of bridges to span the gap between the mainland and the tiny volcanic island of Karakarede. The first were put up by fishermen in the 18th century, to catch the salmon that would pass through in summer to spawn in the river's bush and ban. The bridge is hoisted 30 meters above a romantic seascape, and if you can handle heights you can look back to the line of dark basalt cliffs on the mainland. At number 5, Carrickfergus Castle. County Antrim's Carrickfergus Castle is seen as the most complete example of Norman military architecture in Northern Ireland. Founded in 1170, the castle has an easily defendable location on the north shore of the Belfast Lock, and was once bounded on three sides by water. To control this castle was to control a key port, and over 850 years the stronghold has faced attacks by English, Irish, Scottish and French forces, and was involved in a skirmish with the American commander John Paul Jones in the War of Independence. At number 4, Sleeve Galleon. 
in County Londonderry, on the eastern flank of the Spurin Mountains is a mountain rated as an area of high scenic value by the Northern Ireland Planning Service. Sleeve Galleon is a volcanic plug with two peaks, rising suddenly from an otherwise flat and lush landscape of spruce forest and small farms delineated by hedgerows and dry stone walls. The highest point is to the southwest at Glenaruda Mountain and Tintaw Mountain, at 528 meters. You don't need to be any sort of mountaineer or hiker to surmount this peak, as there's a car park near the summit. At number 3 in our list, Marble Arch Caves. In County Fermanagh, the limestone Marble Arch Caves are up there with Europe's finest show caves. Diving to 94 meters and 11.5 kilometers in length, this is the longest cave system in Northern Ireland and the most impressive karst formation in Great Britain. It's a thrilling subterranean world of serpentine passages, soaring chambers, rivers and waterfalls. Overhead you can spot stalactites and calcite formations, all pointed out by fun and enthusiastic guides on a 75-minute tour on a trail 1.5 kilometers long. At number 2, Glens of Antrim. An area of outstanding natural beauty, in the namesake county, the Glens of Antrim are nine deep valleys issuing from Antrim Plateau to the coast. The Glens have been immortalized by songs and poetry, and each one has its own charm and story to tell. Within an area of just 50 square kilometers there's an astonishing diversity of glacial valleys, bogs, mountain streams, tundra plateau, waterfalls, deciduous and coniferous forest and skyscraping cliffs. Signs of human habitation, both recent and prehistoric are everywhere, from adorable little villages to lonely cottages, dry stone walls, cairns and menhirs. Check out the number one places in our list, Valley Castle Beach. Another much-loved stop on the Causeway Coastal Route, this sweeping, 1.2 km sandy and shingle beach is next to the coastal village of the same name. The beach is flanked by the pier of Valley Castle's marina in the west and the craggy Pans Rock to the east. On a calm sunny day in summer it's a lovely place to dip your toes in the North Channel. On the village side there's a promenade with lawns, children's playgrounds and pubs, all slightly raised with a view of the beach and as far as the Mull of Kintyre when the skies are clear. Now it's time to hear from you what's your favorite things to do in Northern Ireland. Is there something we missed let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to Greenable if you haven't already click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.